Well, hello there. It's Beards and Bangers. And today we're reviewing one of our favorite cars, one of the UK's former favorite cars, uh, a Rover that was available in many different guises, but uh, this one's a bit special because it's a pre-project drive Rover. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. So today we're looking at a Rover 25. Now I want to take you back in time and talk a little bit about the history of the Rover 25. So we actually need to think about something called the Rover 200 and even before that, the Honda Ballard and the Triumph Acclaim. So um, Honda's first link up with British Leyland, which was then went on to become Austin Rover, was when they decided to rebadge the Honda Ballard back in 1980 and make the Triumph a claim. So the last car to wear the Triumph badge. And that's where the, the relationship with Honda started. That continued when the, the SD3, so the first Rover 200, was built in the mid 80s. So that was the 213 and the 216. And that, that relationship continued into the R8 platform. So we see a lot of our 214s, 216s with Honda engines rather than Rover engines. And then, things got divorced so there are still some Honda bits and bobs in these cars but when BMW took over Rover Group in 1994 they didn't want anything to do with Honda of course they wouldn't a big rival Japanese car manufacturer so this started out as the R3 Rover 200 and in 1995 sorry that was in 1995 but in 1999 so 98 99 the 200 became the 25 and what Rover did was they took the corporate look that they'd invented from the Rover 75 and we have we see these twin headlights we see a deep much deeper grill so this car is actually for sale I'm not selling it it's a friend selling it we're gonna have a look around the car talk a little bit about it we're then gonna jump in take it for a drive and uh, yeah we'll let you see what you think and if you want to buy it you can it's for sale for 1200 pounds seems really good so the r3 is, is a really bubbly platform it's, it's got a real bubbly shape to it should i say um very attractive they still look fairly fresh today so this car is what 23 years old um but they don't look out of place on modern roads and i've said this before about the 75 and other other mg rover cars they look they still look fresh um i think the the dual, the twin headlights is quite desirable. Um, I think it is the, it's possibly the best face. I know some people like the earlier R3 um, lights um, and then some people really don't like the, the facelift lights. So the single piece headlight that came in um, in 2004. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a really attractive, really attractive car. They, so they still look nice. You still, still see lots on the road. Um, they are loved cars. They're very economical, they're good on insurance. Um, okay, they're not great on tax, but you know, what, what sort of older car is, but still, this is one of the cheaper MG Rover cars to tax. Um, if you want a tax bill, then yeah, get something like my uh, ZT260, but get a late registered one, like a 2006, then you're paying serious tax. Let's have a little look uh, under the bonnet. So we've got our Rover K-Series 1.4. Not quite sure, we're not quite sure what the power output is. So the 1.4 um, actually came in three power outputs. So the, the early ones had um, two valves per head. So they were eight valve engines. I think they had single point fuel injection. So they, they were quite low powered. But this these later ones have multi-point injection. Um, they've got the twin cam and they've got 16 valves. They do put out a bit more power. I think there's the 84 brake horsepower and then there's a 104 brake horsepower variant. Which one this is, not quite sure. I've just driven the car to here to film. Um, it's only done 38,000 miles, so it doesn't actually feel rub, rub, run in. It, everything still feels quite tight. Um, but I suspect this is the 84 brake horsepower version. But yeah, K-series engines, if you're looking at Rover for the first time like this, K-series engines, you may have heard horror stories. Yeah, Rover did skimp in the factory, but if these engines are properly maintained, oil changes, check all your hoses, coolant changes, I've said this before on this channel, but the K-series are tremendous fun. It doesn't matter whether it's the 1.1 litre, 
or the 1.8 they are great engines just maintain it make sure if you're buying a car like this you can see some history if there's no service history then you know just see ask when was the cam belt done has the head gasket been done if so when have you got in documentation so really important but yeah nice easy engine bay to work with um you've got your screen wash power steering brake reservoir uh coolant expansion tank battery down here and then of course we've got our k-series lump there i won't show you the boot because it's full of the owner's uh stuff but um yeah it's a, it's, it's not a bad size boot for the size of the car it's, it's not voluminous um these were no, these were marketed as a small family car um so it's yeah it's not tiny but it's i've seen bigger boots but it's it, it's, it's the right size boot for the car um, this one's the five door there's a bit of a argument on which looks nicer the three door or the five but this certainly being a five door is more practical we'll jump inside we'll have a little look and then we'll take it for a drive so we'll start off in the back it's not you've got a nice bench seat uh, this being an early one you've got no rear head restraints but that's neither here nor there but yeah not they're not shocking on legroom um you do get this going these hand, door, door handle trim does come off uh it's just one of the things they do but you can get these you can get replacement the whole thing uh with the trim on for not very much money it's a part that is available and uh, it's something you can remedy pretty straightforward you've got four screws three screws is it for uh, three screws yeah take that off put a new one on your job's done and it looks nice again so yeah so not a bad not a bad bit of legroom in the back obviously the five door oh typical mg rover let's have a little look in the front so yeah jumping in the car um we have got some wood trim because this is a rover um it's uh yeah pretty comfy seats um we start in the middle this time we've got a handbrake down here We've got a blanking plate here for something and i forget what that is but you can you can actually buy an armrest um to go in these our electric window controls don't change um so if you look if you jump in a, a an early r3 they're in the same place you'll have seen that with my brm uh got a five speed gearbox um these gators always go but again can be replaced what i do like about this car um, we've got a cubby down here with a place to keep your cassettes ashtray cigarette lighter or 12 volt accessory socket as we should now call it in these politically correct times but what this car has got is a rover radio cassette uh, that works because i've heard it um so that's really nice these are yeah these are getting hard to get a lot of people have of course put cd players dab radios in uh which you can't blame people for doing that because we you know we do we did live in the age of the cd we now live in the age of the the download so people want more and more you know increasing modern radios and that's fine you know if well, people want to use modern classics as daily drivers you want it to be sort of up to date um we've got our heating controls uh common pitfall with r3s is the resistor going on the fans um so you've got a resistor for i think fan speed one and two and you've got a resistor for three and a resistor for four and they all seem to go in turn four normally four normally lasts a bit longer but one and two always seem to go and then three goes eventually uh heater direction we can recirculate as well um and we've got this being a rover we've got uh this fresh air feed here so if we open that like that we can get fresh air from these vents here whatever the heater's doing so the heater could be blasting out hot air in the other vents but you'll get cold fresh air out of here earlier model so no air conditioning um not a problem if you get too hot open the window uh, or on this one open the sunroof while we're here look at this this is an intact headlining it looks original and it's intact it's not sagging down it's not even peeling here at the uh, where it meets the windscreen so quite remarkable uh rear fog lights on these no front fog lights um we've got our clock up here which is just about working i don't know how well you can see that but again they do go um our dash is is really straightforward um just black black dials and of course one of our features with the uh with with these rovers is that the the petrol gauge tells you how much fuel you've got whether the car's turned on or not um you've got a nice leather steering wheel very ergonomic nice shape 
Um, you've got steering wheel controls for the volume and uh, uh, fast forward or station up and down. Uh, these stalks just don't change in Rovers of this period. You've got your headlights and indicators here, uh, front and rear windscreen wipers here, and then you've got um, electrically controlled door mirrors, and it has got the this shape door mirrors rather than the 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 foldy um, the foldy affairs, the kind of springy affairs that you found on the R8, which some which some R3s did get, and you can adjust the pitch of the headlight beam as well so there we are there's a little walk around the inside a couple of bits i missed we've got a cubby here which is really helpful so no passenger airbag and of course we have a glove box so i am going to take this car for a drive and uh, bring you along with me so what's this one like to drive well the first thing i noticed is the engine is incredibly quiet k-series engines can be a bit top end sounding they can sound a bit tappity to use um, an incorrect kind of word um, but this one it's really quiet which is really nice so we're going to get out for a drive and uh, yes then we shall yeah wrap up this video and uh, if you're interested in the car you can get in touch with me and I'll put you on to the owner So as I said earlier, this one's done just over 38,000 miles. Um, and it shows because everything feels nice and tight. The steering feels really good. Um, but it, what impresses me most so far with this little car is the engine is just so quiet. Let's let this, uh, oh no, the Fiat's gonna let me through. That's nice of them. So even revving it hard in first gear, um, you do still get that lovely little K-series noise that you get. Don't know what it is, K-series pull off in first gear. It's got a lovely whiny noise that I really like. Same with old minis. Um, don't know what it is, very evocative, love it, brilliant. Um, but yeah, just I'm just pottering around the kind of suburban area. The engine's just purring along quietly. Um, I've actually got noise from the fan rather than the engine but it's, it's so quiet it's lovely and the steering is really direct really positive a bit of revs up there so we can we can hear the engine it's got a pleasing little growl that and that's what's great about k series they're just they're revy happy little engines um yeah and this one is absolutely no exception to that So we'll get her out on some open road and we'll in a moment we'll get you on beard cam so we get a good test now because we come into a roundabout and that's always a good good test of a car chucking it around see what it does well we have got a fair bit of a uh, traffic around I want to get some power it's there and I think even the 80 what is it the 84 brake horsepower version is it's still quite perky they're all perky yeah no problems getting around there. not too wallowy um, some people have lowered these of course if that's what you want to do it's your car it's your choice but yeah now up at open on open road 50 miles an hour and it's lovely and quiet it's really nice I like this car I do like this car avoid a pothole of course right you need to go on beard cam so you can uh, see what it looks like out the window right so you are now on beard cam Give it a bit of a rev just to see how it goes. Up at 60, pretty effortlessly. Let's drop back to 50, because that is actually the limit down here. Yeah, you've got a nice comfy seat. Not, not that buckety, these seats. So they are really for comfort. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty nice.
He said, of course, these the Rover 25 was um, almost given away to younger drivers at one point because they, 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 Rover was selling it with a year's insurance to make it really attractive to young drivers. And they are a cheaper car to insure. I don't think they're quite, um, you're quite able to insure them as a classic yet. Um, but I'm sure that is only just around the corner. Obviously, if you are looking at insurance, if you're buying a car like this as a second car, uh, not your daily transport, then you know do shop around with the classic car specialists. I won't name them because I, I use a few myself. I don't want to favour one over the other. Um, but yeah, do do make inquiries of the classic car insurance specialists because one of them may well take um, may, may well take this as a classic. Now I know with my MGTF, one provider would take it as a classic and the other one wouldn't so it's uh yeah you just don't know uh, they all have their kind of little little rules uh that they follow to themselves right another roundabout getting a bit of bit of revs up and then stuck behind a hyundai yeah this this car could either be a you know, very usable second car as a as a modern classic. If you're a, an MG Rover nut, um, but something like this, low mileage, pretty tidy, easy to repair. You know, would make it a good daily driver. And I did have one of these. I had a, I also had a very early Rover Twenty Five, which I rescued. Uh, from a farm near me last year and sold it to a guy you know who's using it as daily transport I didn't get much content on that because I, I did that did that car when uh, I wasn't really doing YouTube so um, yeah but they are they are good um, yeah and this one as I say it's for sale 1200 quid if you want to know uh, how to get in touch with the owner then please either put a little comment down below or uh, send me a message through my Facebook group which is also called Beards and Bangers right let's get this this little chap home and then uh, we shall wrap this video up yeah just just regard the brakes and clutch on these you you jump in them and you think oh my god the clutch is on its way out and the brakes are failing R3s the brakes are the on the rovers especially the mg's are a bit different because the brakes are changed but the brakes are a bit spongy um the clutches have got a very high bite point so that's just what they're like um you know having driven several myself now so yeah if you are getting in one you think oh don't like the brakes don't like this don't like that then um that's what they're like so thank you for watching this Rover 25 based episode of Beards and Bangers. As I say, if you want to get in touch and interested in this car, let me know. Um, if you've enjoyed the review because you're looking at a Rover 25 or you just like looking at videos about Rover 25 presented with men with beards, then please do hit subscribe. If you haven't already done so, hit like. Uh, and if you want to become a channel member, then please do subscribe that way as well. It's greatly appreciated any funds made on my youtube videos get plowed back into car projects which is what it's all about thank you for watching i will see you again in the next episode of beards and bangers very soon goodbye <laughs>